What is going on, true believers? Today, we're going to talk about some futures trading that I'm doing right now. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing. You'll see the amounts. You'll know everything that's going on. There's three projects that I'm kind of focused on right now. Uh, one of them is obviously, or it should be obvious to everybody, is Bitcoin. That's the most important, and that's the king of crypto. Uh, the other one is Ethereum. And then the third one is called VeChain. It's V E T. Uh, with a cash tag. And if you're wondering anything about that, I'm not a paid sponsor. I'm not a spokesperson for them. I have no affiliation with them, but I thought that there might be a big move. Now I could be wrong about it. And I got a big pump a little while ago and it was a serious sort of gain off of it. And I'm going to show it to you. And then we'll talk about uh, what we're going to do going forward. Now, if you like this type of content, make sure that you hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell to be notified of future content. And we'll keep providing this type of stuff for you guys. So without further ado, let's get into it. First of all, this is the VeChain chart right now. Really just kind of looks like one of those. We got the double top. We got to move down here, a sort of corrective measure, if you will. But then it found range right here. So it would seem to me that there was going to be a leg or a level up, in my opinion. Uh, same thing for Bitcoin, as you can see over here. Same, not We didn't get really a double top on it, but you can see, nonetheless, kind of the same thing here. We got a big move. We've kind of angled sideways. The uh, liquidity sweep, which I told you guys to expect, came and we wiped out uh, a, a bunch of long positions on that short that were very aggressive as we were wiping out those you know 100 and 200 x then uh the move continued back towards the upside with 53,000 uh, 53,000 being the uh, next local target for liquidity and then you have ethereum ethereum is moving kind of in in lockstep with bitcoin as you can look right here I'm flipping back and forth and you can just see really looks a, a very similar and i think that ethereum by virtue of Dan Kuhn, the new upgrade, probably has an opportunity for a nice little run with an expectation. You know what? I'll show you the expectation in just a few minutes. This is what we're trading right now. This is what it looks like. Uh, so as you can see right here, I bought uh, I, I bought Bitcoin at, uh, and by the way, remember, uh, if you will, that we went in at 44900 and then I liquidated that position, uh, took profit on it, and then we re-entered at an entry price of 49408 Currently, we're at 51807 We're up $744, $745. Yesterday, I entered into a an Ethereum position at $2787. Currently, we're at $2808. Um, and, and, you know, $36 profit. Not enough that we're actually going to cash that out or doing. Uh, but we did the same thing over here with uh, VeChain as well. I thought, you know, VeChain runs a little bit hot. I, I, I would admit that when I looked at it, I thought, you know, this is kind of, uh, and this is five minute chart, by the way, if we come to an hour chart, you can see a little bit better, but it, it looks like it kind of, um, you know, it had run and maybe it had run its course, if you will, and was about to correct to the downside. And then we saw this little double top happen over here and then it came back down, but then it seemed to find support around this range. So we entered at, uh, 4483, thinking that there might be some upside momentum to it. Now, when I woke up this morning, uh, it had been in this 46 range, which means that the profit on it was at about 50%, uh, and the profit on it on 256 was about 130, $140. Uh, but I thought I would hold on to it for a little bit longer because number one, I wanted to make a video and show you guys what it is that's going on over here. And then you know, kind of recognize that it, although there could be a dip and we could get wrecked and liquidated on it, you can see my liquidation point here is 42.78, but I don't think so. Ethereum also 26.67, but I don't think so. And then Bitcoin 46.485. Now, if you remember, I said a um, I said a buy at 46,600 on my Bitcoin in order to uh, make that uh, uh, just in case it kind of dip. But then I started thinking about I don't know if the I don't know if that's gonna I don't know if it's gonna do that. So that leaves me with, you know, what to do right now. Well, uh, I, I took the up only philosophy and I'm not sure that that's going to be right. This is a, a, a guess based on what I'm seeing on the charts and what I'm seeing on the charts is up only sort of momentum. Um, now, you know, short term, there could always be a dip, but let's face it, uh, even if you're in this position right here, very tough with, with a lower sort of leverage to get liquidated in this 
sort of realm right now. This is the this is the bull run. This is the golden bull that we're sitting in right now. So where do we expect Bitcoin to be? Well, um, you know, the, the big thing here is, you know, we, we kind of look around and we what we like to do, um, it, it will come out here into let's just do a weekly over here. And we're in a long term sort of this is the, the big move there. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this because I want to show you something that's probably even more important. So let's pop this out. And, you know, we don't need to see the top over here. I'm about to show you where the top is. We don't need that resistance right there. Obviously, this thing right here, we've already finished that. But I'm going to show you a Fib retracement. That Fib retracement is going to be from the top down to the bottom over here. And it give you kind of a look here at, you know, what it is that we're really looking for. So uh, to make sure that we're in the, the perfect position, uh, we're going to zoom in just a little bit. And... As you can see right here, we're going to unlock that. We're going to move that over here to 69 right there. Uh, and then we're going to go look at this bottom over here. And we're going to make sure that we are exactly to the dollar where we should be. It's 15,463, 15,560. That's close enough. It's within $100. Um, we could, uh, if you if you wanted to, uh, take the zero here. By the way, if you ever have this situation occur and you want to do something about it, you can always come up here and you can always kind of change the levels in the settings right here uh, with that uh, with, with the uh, coordinates, um, the the number one and the number two. You could just kind of set them at so fifteen four sixty three is the number that we're looking at right there. Um, that'll extend it down just a little bit. And then we want to make sure that we got the high up here, which is 69086. So uh, we'll come into the settings and we'll make that 69086. Okay, that gives us a perfect move for the positions that we're looking for. Now, what do those look like? Well, um, that looks like 48,600, if you can see that right there, if that's uh, making sense for you, 48,602. So what we need to do is we need to close a monthly candle above 48,602. If we could close above 48,602, that's the, the golden bull cycle. And what that looks like over here is on this monthly right here. Uh, very simple. We're looking for a candle close uh, up above this green line right here, 48,6. So at this point, we're at over 51,000. So it really looks like that that's about to occur. If that's going to occur, then the last time that happened and we closed this cycle, that's where we want to really kind of dig in. Okay, so what we're looking at right now is Bitcoin in 2017. We're going to paint ourselves a little different picture. I'll get rid of this line right here. And what we're going to do is the same sort of fib retracement over here. And we're going to catch our bottom down here. And we're going to do a little less um, soul searching, figuring out uh, than, than we would. But I, I want to point out this right here. This is what I think the important thing is. There's your 618. That 618 previously was 13,467. The reason for that is because previous top over here is 19,838. Previous bottom over here uh, was down in this range at around 3,000. So that's where the big move came, right? Uh, this is the top. Then we came back down here. And we didn't have a double top retest, but we had another pump up here uh, after, after this. What did we do? We got rejected off of the 618. It's the perfect line. So then what happened is... We came over here, and if you no, if you notice, this is where we closed. Now, I want to stress this right now because I don't think people are paying attention, and nobody's really seeing this. So we closed above the 618, 13,467. Uh, you can see up there at the top, the close here was 13,809. That represented a 3 or $400 close above this level. And what happened the next month? The next month, we were at 19,000. The month after that? It got even wilder and we closed at uh what is this candle 28.9 uh that took us all the way up to 60,000. this is the move okay just a, a, as an example now applying that same logic over here if we close above this range right now then for the next two months and look uh, a close above 618 by the way uh it is based on the having it is what you know what we're looking for right well this close right here came after the having that's what caused the 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 mass surge uh in this uh in, in this previous market over here so the question is now uh what's going to happen and 
guys, I just want to tell you that if we close over 48,000, then if history is a lesson, then Bitcoin is headed, you know, 100,000. It's going to happen very quick. I keep telling you guys that there are some wild numbers and some wild and rampant speculation that I have about what this market's going to do. And if you follow me for all of this time, you know I've been right all of this time. You don't like it sometimes because, you know, I remind you constantly, but, you know, that is the truth. We are in this big run. We are in the the, the thick of things, if you will. And we're about to have just a, a fantastic uh, sort of move. Now, we've gotten to this point, a consolidation sideways for a couple of days, but we're not getting a dip. Now, what happens when that, uh, we, we had that consolidation right here, then we found our dip. And then what did it do? It ended up minting us a much bigger high. Uh, we went from 44 to 48. Then we had our real correction, right? This is the uh, this is the the anti FOMO, if you will. This is when people started telling you all about grayscale and how grayscale was dumping on the chart and how oh no, we're going to zero. And you had Peter Schiff and you had the Gareth Soloways, the the bears. You know, we had them out here going way, we're going down way. I'm taking shorts way. And then all of a sudden, you got this reversal. Why? Well, the narrative changed. And how did the narrative change? Well, everybody started to see, hey, you know, these guys are full of it. They don't know what they're talking about. Clearly, there's something wrong here. And these guys, these, these Gareth Soloways, they just don't see it. They don't understand what's going on in this market. They're not, you know, they're 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 using their pre-existing notions. About, and by the way, these are fair. And they work on a lot of different charts and a lot of different perspectives. They just don't work on Bitcoin right now. This is something different. Therefore, um, they just don't get it. And that's okay. But... What we're seeing right now is we're seeing this next big leg up. Now, we're going to see a little consolidation. Are we going to see a test down here again one more time at 48,000? Probably. I mean, it, it seems like it's reasonable to expect that with this type of move and this type of move that that, that would happen. But here's the thing. Here, here's, the, here's the real thing. This happened before the ETFs. This happened after the ETFs, but while we were testing out the narrative and not realizing how positive the narrative actually was. And that's what's caused this. Now, this is just the start. This continues to, and, and by the way, this continues to manifest itself. It continues to pump. It continues to do great things. So we could test this 48,000 one more time. It's not, un, it's not unheard of for that to happen. However, uh, we are closer to 63,000 than we are to 48,000 at this point. Now, I know the logic doesn't um, predicate that, but this is a different narrative in the market. So uh, I, I think we've got some upward motion. Now, uh, taking it a step further, Ethereum. What about the narrative on Ethereum? Well, Dankun is coming. And if Dankun is coming, then the FOMO buildup is just getting started, right? If we go back and we look at the previous 30 days, or even let's call it the last two weeks of run up before the last major upgrade, and that was the merge, and that was ETH 2.0. So the ETH merge date was September 15 of 2022. So what we want to do is we would like to get an idea of what it looked like in September 2022 and what happened, all right? All right, so we were dealing with FUD. There were additional issues, but we knew that it was coming. So what happened? We had gone from our bottom, which was around 1,000, all the way down here, by the way, 800 wick. And then it moved up and we had this nice big rally taking us up to around 2,000. Well, then we had this massive dip here. Well, in the uh, two weeks that led up, this is the two weeks that led up to the merge. The merge happened uh, right in these ranges right here, but this was the buildup to the merge. And that, if applied over here, just using a little bit of logic and reason, if we just kind of pull out the... Uh, we just kind of pull out these, get an idea of what it looks like. Then, you know, let's come over and let's apply this logic to where we are right now. And where does that put us? It puts it at 35,000, 3,500, sorry, <laughs> puts it at 3,500 that, and this is, guys, this is the reason that I keep telling you 3,500 is in the cards for Ethereum. There's a big rally getting ready to happen for Ethereum. Dankun is going to change the dynamic of Ethereum in a lot of fundamental ways. Does not reduce gas fees, by the way, for the layer one, according to most of the reports and most of the people. It doesn't change too much there. But what it does do, 
is it changes the L L2s and the ZK rollups and it turns them into uh, much cheaper by a factor of somewhere between eight and tenfold. Therefore, Ethereum is about to become even bigger by proxy. So Ethereum and the value therein is just going to continue to rise and elevate itself. So that leads us to VeChain. Now, VeChain is popping off on this level here, and you can make an argument that it's kind of uh, ranging here in a way that gives us that feeling that it's just about to leg up one more time. And then the question is, why is that happening? If I just type in VeChain and just kind of look around here, there's a lot of rumors, there's a lot of speculation, but everybody who's looking at it looks to be consolidating nicely before the next leg up. I'm feeling super bullish. Everybody who's doing anything really kind of notes. But here's the thing, partnership to game changers, keynote analysis. Um, this is something that's coming according to insiders, potentially. The rumor is that VeChain is planning to assist JP Morgan with digital payments, and there are talks of a partnership with Samsung VeChain to the moon. That doesn't mean that it's happening, but it does mean uh, keynote analysis, Nazim Ali will explore the impacts of innovation within the next wave of Game Changers, discussing in the Partners to Game Changers keynote featuring Jim Tecovny, CEO of Aleph Aeronautics, and Sunny Liu, CEO of VeChain. Uh, and that's coming Tuesday, the 27th of February. That's a big FOMO build potentially uh, for VeChain. So um, when you consider and, and come on, everybody who's looking at this chart is seeing the same things, right? Um, and, and if any of this is remotely true, if a, if a deal with Samsung is in the cards or if a deal with JP Morgan in some fashion is in the cards, well, guys, it's only a matter of time before you start to revisit some previous highs. And what do the previous highs look like? Well, let's take a quick look at the local highs and then we'll get an idea of where we are or could be. And we're talking about 5.1 cents right now. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for something much higher. Well, let's zoom out because when you're in doubt, zoom out. What do you see when you zoom out? Well, you see this long-term trend line now broken and used as support for this breakout move. This breakout move right here going towards the top corresponds with looking across this line, a previous dip, the previous lows and some previous tops. Like this is the perfect level, but what happens if it breaks this level and that's what it's consolidating in order to do it's gathering up steam it's in, it's grabbing more investors it's getting people up to this next level well what does the next level look like well that next level goes all the way up to seven cents at that point because now you're starting to break down some of this resistance here and then it goes up to 10 cents uh and then the all-time high 27 cents for v chain and if any of these partnerships are real if any of these partnerships are representative of a positive result for v chain then let's look at what the top was previous so this is v chain on coin market cap and let's look at the all time and we're looking at the price action we know that it's 27 cents and we go to the market cap and what's the market cap up here at the top well the market cap up here at the top is about 16.2 billion what's the market cap right now 3.2 billion so what you could be looking at is a very rapid sort of 5x. Consider that in this move right here, uh, we've seen this before. We, we've seen this move happen before, and that ended up with this big parabolic run. Now, I don't think that we get this big parabolic run until we get into uh, this, 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 the, the real altcoin season, if you will, the real bull run sort of area. But we're here at the dawn of that. So anything is subject to happen at any point. The secondary follow-up rally saw VeChain go back up to 2 to 10 billion before correcting, again, back down here into this 3 billion range. So if there happens to be some sort of real positive occurrence, which, again, rumors persist, if there's something real and tangible in this, then what you are witnessing right now is just some random trade volume. If I break this down into your trade window of your 30 minute time frame here, you're seeing a fight playing out and you're seeing bulls and bears just really sort of uh, continuing on. But what you're kind of looking at here is this is again, wild speculation, wild guess, but you're looking at this kind of, um, you know, is that 
uh, uh, some kind of pennant flag that's about to break out to the upside. I don't know. Uh, could be that we're looking at, let's remove that and let's take another perspective and say that, well, you know, maybe it's this right here that's kind of playing out. And of course, if I change time frames, then it's easier to make all of these pieces sort of fit, if you will. Uh, but it, it really kind of looks like we are just about ready uh, to break towards that upside. If we do, then we're in price exploration modes up to 5.1 cents. Now, uh, coming back over here, uh, you can see right here, I, I didn't really have any reason to uh, to remain bearish, to, to, to look at this as a negative. So what did I do? I set my entire TP uh, and, and stop losses. I haven't even touched any of, any of this, you know, fundamentally. Uh, my take profit for Bitcoin is set at 63,500 because I do believe Bitcoin is about to rip to 63,500. Uh, also, in the event that that were to happen, the amount of take profit on that would be 4,360. It's not life changing, it's not game changing. This is just a nice little flip that I'm trying to make on uh, on Bitcoin. Uh, 3,400 for Ethereum. I'm not convinced that it's going to go to exactly 3,500. So I'm hedging a little bit and I'm going for 3,400. Instead, as a guess, I am wildly speculating and I am wildly just guessing right here. And if that were to happen and I were to trigger that at um, uh, in, in this position at 3,400, then we're looking at 3,400. And that would be a nice tidy $1,000 in profit in the event that that were to occur. And then I took the uh, TP here at 5.1 cents over here. Uh, and this is going to be uh, 051. 697. Now, what I did originally was I kind of set it for uh, 0.063, which I thought 63 seems to be 6.3 cents seems to be one of those really good spots for uh, V chain, which was a, a sort of a, a confluence area. So you know what? Let's just plug that in. Another two thousand dollars. So if if this all plays out to any sort of positive result and we get to those levels, then this this could be a nice nice win if not then you know it, it, it's okay it, it, it's fine uh to to not have those wins these are risks that i am willing to take to um uh, you know to 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 show you guys you know I'm, I'm sticking with my narratives that i think this is up only and i'm willing to put that risk right there to say that that's what i think is going to happen i, I think that we're in a positive sort of scenario now all of these things being the case I could absolutely just at, at a last moment say, you know what? I would rather have that cash in hand than just kind of hold on to it and wait for it. But that's what I have my spot wallet for. I, I have my spot wallet just to kind of hold on for dear life and wait to see something magical happen. So I, I don't need the the futures to absolutely pop off or or, or do anything. It'd be nice if they did, but it, it's not necessary. What I'm what I'm really trying to do here, and by the way, if you haven't already, consider signing up to Fairdesk. Consider signing up and helping me out. It helps me out tremendously when you sign up at Fairdesk and you start trading over there. When you do that, um, then that's the best thing that you can do uh, to help me right now. Uh, you know, again, previously we were, we were talking about MEXC, but we're not doing that anymore. Uh, I really do not like the way that they um, the way that they did business. However. I will say that, and we can come over here and check this out one final time, that I do have all of my um, my, my brand new spot wallet that I share with the public in <laughs> this, uh, in MEXE for the moment. So my API, uh, if you remember, which was $100, now $140. Solana, $100, was now $117. Injective was $100, it's now $106. Caspa was $50, and now it's $80. Uh, render was 50 now it's 68 a avalanche 50 now it's 65 volt was 50 now it's 62 arb was 50 now it's 60 doge was 50 now it's 52 bone was 50 now it's 46 uh, i've got 37 more dollars in accumulation and then i've got 18 dollars that i put into hex in fact um what i did want to do was uh load up on hex for uh the upcoming run because i really thought that that hex would probably have sort of a breakout because Pulse Chain seems to be getting some, you know, some just some just some nice flow to it, and and the narrative seems to be sort of changing as the bull market gets closer and closer. So you know, you might see me pop in a little bit more there, but you know, it's a very simple amount. So eight hundred dollars in this wallet, so you know, it's not a lot of money. 
uh, just eight hundred and fifty seven dollars as of right now. So you know that's what we're re rebuilding with. So that's it, guys. Uh, now you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now you can see exactly uh, what I'm hoping for, what I'm looking at, uh, what my goals are. Sixty three thousand five hundred thirty four hundred uh, six point three cents on V chain. You know these are the numbers that I'm gonna kind of hold to uh, again you know something could change and i might just take the profit because i'm not feeling the market the market seems to be shifting and narrative is changing something like that but as of this point none of that has happened so there's no reason to do that so um that's it for now so it's not financial advice but he believes i'm always right thank you so much for tuning in i uh, appreciate each and every one of you and uh We'll talk to you again soon. We have a giant update from Cryptonomy.Finance, guys. Brand new website, Solana. I'm going to earn 26 Solana for this move right here. About 2600 bucks. $2,600 for my Tether over here. Uh, the XRP, 2313 Again, these do not unlock for a long period of time. I'm not going to unlock until November, but uh, I'm going to have 0.99. One extra Ethereum. Don't know how much it's going to be worth at that time. You never know. Worth nothing might be worth a lot. 0.08 Bitcoin. I'll have available at that point, 0 0.037 Bitcoin over here, and then 0 0.012 Bit. This launch pool, now I'm locked in until November of 2024. You can see that my accrued interest so far, 57,281.92. Now you might be asking yourself, like, how are you earning this, uh, Blaze? It's because I signed up to Cryptonomy.Finance. I just put the money in. I gave myself a shot, gave it an opportunity uh, in the bull run. That's where the money gets made. So... I'm going to let this ride for a little while. You let me know what you think.